Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Spider-Verse Retrospectives. And today we're going to be concluding our discussion on the Electroverse storyline as we take a look at Web Warriors number 5. Now, <clears throat> last time on Web Warriors. So, at this point, the Spideys began essentially trying to figure out a way to take down the Electros. After having after the Web Warriors met, lost Bloom World to the Electro Army, they decided that they needed to capture any leads they could, and since they were currently trapped on Earth-803, they wound up getting help from that world's spy, local spider person, May Riley, aka the Lady Spider, and she was able to inform them about Black Cat and how she distracted her from a Silver Heist. Thankfully, the Web Warriors were able to catch up with that world's Black Cat, who revealed that she had no idea that she was assisting the Electroverse, and likewise, the, and likewise, she real her ambitions were really just steal thing, get paid. Ultimately, and ultimately, the only payment that she really got was a bobble that the Web Warriors wound up taking. In the meantime, while they were in the meantime, Pavitra was able to use the technology he could find on that world to create what was supposed to be this massive communicator that could send out signals across par parallel universes. But the only problem is he couldn't get a suitable power source for it because, well, Earth 803 was set in the I think 1890s or so, so, so to speak. But so it seemed like they hit a dead end. Thankfully, however, they did find a solution. As it turns out, within the little bobble that they had taken that the Web Warriors had taken from Black Cat was a little tiny electro, and thus they got the power source for the communicator. In the meantime, back with Spider Gwen and Spider Ben, they decided to enact their own plan against the Electroverse and the Battery. As while they knew they couldn't face the Electroverse head on, at the very least they could cripple them somewhat. In this case, with the in this case, they man Ben and Gwen managed to travel to the universe where the Electros were keeping their gr their I want to say collective of Doc Ox and set them free, since the Doc Ox are the ones that were looking into other universes and mapping them out for the Electros. And while they do succeed in this plan. Well, there's still two Spidey. There's still Spidey's from two separate universes against the whole army of Doc Ox, and well, Doc Ox a bad guy, so they're not exactly happy to see the various fight like the pair of Spideys, which results in this big massive fight. Thankfully, they end up getting help from one of the uh, from one of the Doc Ox, who it turn uh, a lady by the name of Octavia Otto, a version of Doc Ock from a universe where things are just reversed, names, genders, and of course alignments. And so, likewise, she is a good guy version who basically just wants to get back at the Electros because well, they kidnapped her from her home, and she want and she wants justice. Justice. And however, as the trio of, as the trio were escaping from the Doc Ox, they wound up going through special they wound up going through special project the special projects lab, and they wound up just and they wound up finding a helmet that was supposed to be uh it was supposed to be a hold on, I have to remember the name because I really do suck at it because I just I know I read it. It was what was it? Son of a freaking I'll find it, I promise. Oh yeah. Telecon is a teleconsciousness helmet. Basically, it's the thing that Otto in the main universe used to swap his and Spidey's minds. Which, while Gwen does take a slight interest in it, and even figures out that it was potentially what created the battery, since it's a, since the battery is supposed to be a hive mind of electros, basically they can, or maybe she learned about Spidey. Either way, which, either way, that's probably the most likely thing. Either way, they managed to escape from the uh, from the Doc Ox, and thankfully, it's at this point when the Web Warriors make contact with Gwen, and Gwen reveals that she thinks she does have a plan to take on the battery, but she'll need a distraction. And so, likewise, Billy actually gives them a gives her the distraction as he sends out a message to all the Electros across the multiverse that they've taken out their mapping system, and that if they want true control of the, of the Web of Life and Destiny, then they'll need the Master Weaver, which, Bill, which Billy and the Web Warriors have on Earth-803. And sure enough, the Electros begin gearing up to launch an all-out assault on Earth-803, which is where issue 5 begins, with, well, and, well, the instant that May ends up hearing what Billy had done, she's not exactly happy about it. Basically, she, because, well, it's an army of super-powered psychos coming to her city, and, well, no matter how low-tech her world is, this is a city full of regular, innocent people against an army of weirdos who can shoot electricity out of their hands. At that point, I don't think that's gonna... I think at that point, no. You're screwed, is what I'm saying. However, Billy does think that he has a way around this. Basically, they've been actually studying the bobble that held a little tiny electro, and it turns out that it utilizes particle... that it utilizes properties to make the... essentially the whole thing, like, a little mini Faraday cage. And likewise, using that as a baseline, Bavitra was able to augment the Spidey's web fluid or at least the web fluid for the Spideys that do use web shooters, and he thinks that they can utilize it to essentially create a makeshift Faraday cage to trap the Electros in. 
which of course begs the which of course makes May beg the question. Well, what are they going to use to trap them? Since well, the city is a big place, but where is a big enough place in the city that can hold potentially thousands of electros? And Billy says, well, he does know a place, Battery Park. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, basically the plan is this. The Web Warriors are going to set Karn out in the center of the park, and they'll just essentially wait around for the Electros to show up. Once they arrive, the Spideys will engage them in combat, and while the Destructor, well, while the Electros are busy take, trying to take out the Spideys and get to Karn, other Spideys will be going around and essentially webbing up a Faraday cage. And because of how augmented this webbing is, it will last a lot longer than, than the Spideys webbing normally goes, since, well, they usually dissolve after an hour. And again, while the web, while the Spideys are a bit hesitant to do this, with even Anya admitting that is essentially just holding Karn out like a like a worm on a hook, even Karn admits that he thinks it's the best thing that they can do. That he's because he's been away from the web of life and Destiny for so long, he's getting weaker and his hunger is coming back. So he does so. He believes that this is the best way to nor to take out the Electros and safely get back to Loom World. They'll have control of the Web of Life and Destiny again, the Electros will be taken care of, and Karma will gain his strength. So basically, this does seem like a... So while this plan is risky, of course, even Karma misses might be their best option. And unfortunately, the, Sp unfortunately, the Spideys don't really have a chance to further debate this, as immediately the all the Electros pop in in a... In a in, from portals, and from there, the fight is on as the Web Warriors duke out against the Electroverse. In the meantime, back with Gwen, Ben, and Octavia Otto, they end up they 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 realize that Billy has set his plan in motion, but it also becomes a matter of trying to figure out how to take on the battery. As Gwen thinks that their plan, as Gwen thinks that she wants that they, Gwen believes that they need to have some kind of insane plan to take the battery down, since well, he's a giant man made of electricity. Her first attempt is to potentially throw the moon into the sun. That plan, even Ben thinks that's extreme. However, Octavia thinks that she may have another idea, at which point she then pulls out the telecon the telecon the teleconsciousness helmet. And Gwen at first thinks that that's a bad idea, since that thing only swaps, is supposed to only swap minds with people, which actually does add further credence to the whole, when she saw the helmet, she realized, oh, they probably used it to swap minds with their world Spider-Man. With that, that, that doc, the Doc Ock that had this probably swap minds with his world Spider-Man, but whatever, I'm getting off topic. My point is this, Gwen does not want to use this helmet, and basically she doesn't want to trap a Spidey in the body of an electric supervillain. However, Octavia thinks that they're made, that she actually, Octavia says that, they have, that she has a different plan. Basically, while the helmet normally is only supposed to swap people's minds, it can also be rigged to erase minds. And if it's properly synced up with someone's brainwaves, it can essentially erase them from existence. And well, that's what Octavian wants to do. She want basically if she thinks that if she can get close enough to the battery to get a sample of his brain waves and scan and copy it down to the helmet, she can erase his consciousness completely and put an end to his threat. Which for which even Gwen and Ben think might be a bit risky, but Octavia, well, she's a little out for blood here because of what the Electros put her through, so she's ready to do anything to take them down. And as such, the Spideys decide that they do that they're gonna go through with this plan. And as such, while the Web Warriors are continuing to deal with the Electros on Earth 803, Gwen, Ben, and Octavia manage to open a portal back to the back to the Moon Universe, which I'm not even gonna remember, I'm not even gonna look up what the number of that is. I'm just gonna keep calling it the Moon Universe, but. And, as a, and basically, when the instant they arrive, they end up taking out a few more Electro Guards, and Gwen ends up having them suit up inside their own inside the, inside their spacesuits because, well, again, when Gwen was last there, she blew out a window, and so sure enough, they do man and sure enough, Gwen, uh, Ben, and Octavia do manage to find the room of the battery, and basically from there, it looks like the plan is going well. Octavia is getting the helmet all set up. It's they think they'll be able to erase the battery. Basically, it looks like things are gonna go all well, right? Wrong. Octavia, as Octavia is rigging the helmet, she ends up getting shot in the back. Well, okay, figuratively, okay, she's got shot with electricity, so she's not dead, but it does end up frying the helmet, and the one responsible is Moon Electro, who has pretty much gotten tired of being the Spidey's punching bag, and is now more than ready to get some much-needed payback, well, much-needed for him, so to speak. However, there is one little problem. When he shot Octavia, he wound up frying his suit. Yeah, it turns out the suits, despite being made for Electros, don't have proper insulation, so the instant that Moon Electro tried shooting out one of his electric blasts, he wound up frying the suit around his hand, and it's now causing some deep. Now it's causing depressurization, which yeah, the guards earlier were were carrying electric rifles, which again, wouldn't they try to find a way to work around that, especially if they if 
the battery was employing other electrodes, you think he would think around and think, hmm, maybe, just maybe, we should make it so that they can use their powers in the suit. But yeah, at this point, Moon Electro realizes he can't really do anything else, and so Ben and, and so Ben manages to come in and web up his suit so he can't do anything. But he does let him know that if he even moves an inch, he's gonna probably break the webbing and he'll be and he'll probably die. But from here, yeah, the battery is now just mocking Gwen, Gwen, Ben, and Octavia because well, their plan is now foiled. The telecommunications helmet is, or teleconsciousness helmet is destroyed, and he pretty much just tells them to run, flee, and just and just give up that they don't stand a chance against them, and so on and so forth. But Gwen has an alternate plan, as she ends up calling Billy, and and asks and says just and tell, and tells him to be prepared. Because she thinks she has another prisoner for his cage, which I love that pa the, the the page where that happens. Because at first the battery is looking all smug and and menacing, but then the instant he hears Gwen talk to Billy, he just go he just pulls an oh shit face, and I love it. As such, Gwen manages to open a portal with her device, and so she Ben and so she Ben and o Octavia and the battery end up getting pulled to Earth 803, and the battery is none too happy about this, which, by the way, I should probably address this. Yeah, they don't explain how Gwen's teleportation device has been repaired, despite the fact that they're no longer using electros, but you could make the argument that she could have gotten it off of one of the ox, or better yet, maybe Octavia repaired the teleportation device. I personally think it may be that Octavia repaired it since... You know, she is an alternate version of Doc Ock, and she probably was smart enough to figure out the intricacies of how it operates. The point, but put simply, yeah, it is working again, so I, I figure I probably should address that. But either way, yeah, the battery's now in, the battery's now on Earth 803, and he's not exactly happy to be here as the Spideys are webbing up the cage. As such, it's once more all out car pan it's all now all out carnage and panic as the Spideys and the Electros continue duking it out. In the midst of all this, Billy manages to get Karn away from the in, in the action, since again, they have to make sure the Electros don't get access to him, but Karn is still too weak and he can't really go much further. As such, Billy says that if he wants that if Karn wants to get any further, he's gonna need to feed, and so Billy offers some of his life force. And while Karn th is at fir the first tries rejecting the offer, since well, he thinks that Billy won't be able to last that much longer if he gets weakened. And Billy tells him that he says it'll be fine. Karn is basically the bigger priority and that he just needs to do it. So Karn kind of accepts the offer and winds up siphoning some of Billy's life force. Not killing him, but it does weaken Billy somewhat. But it does the job for Karn as it manages to rejuvenate them, though May Riot, though Lady Spider swings in and chews Billy out for it, saying that they should have split, though Billy point though Billy points out that she's not a spider totem, so it wouldn't have worked anyway. Though he does compliment her for her grit. Either way, he tells her to just go to take Karn and get the heck out of here before the wet before the Faraday cage is sealed up, and that he'll be right behind her. As such, the end of as such as such, Lady Spider takes Karn and they swing away as a group of, as more electros end up zooming in on Billy. And sure enough, yep, the Faraday cage has been mostly is getting ready to be mostly sealed up with only so with only like a small patch left of the Spideys are still webbing up. But as as Lady Spider ends up coming back out with Karn. Anya, of course, asks where the heck Billy is, but when Lady Spider realizes that she that he didn't well, that he didn't manage to follow her, they realize he's still trapped in there. And while Anya at first wants to jump in and save Billy, Mayday, Mayday ends up cutting her off and saying, "No, I'll do it. You, no, I'll do it. You're the second in command. So if anything happens, you're the one that's gonna have to take charge here." As such, as such, Mayday jumps back into the cage to save Billy, and sure enough, he is okay, but still severely weakened. As such, Mayday does try giving. Just start giving Billy support as they try and get out of the cage, but unfortunately, the timer the t things are getting things are kind of coming to a head as the electros are quickly realizing that this is all a trap and are all trying to teleport out. But unfortunately, with all of them, with all of the electros just frantically trying to activate their own teleportation devices, it's causing all of them to interfere with one another. With even the battery yelling at them to stop, they're being bottlenecked. They have to get out of here, and they have to get out of here, try and get to the entrance. And sure enough, electros start flying for the exit. But and yeah, at this point, Anya realizes they have to seal up the cage now, or the electros will escape, and this will all have been for nothing. And as such, it pretty much just cuts between the web warriors outside the cage and Billy and Mayday inside, as Mayday keeps struggling, telling Billy they're gonna make it, they're gonna make it, and Anya keeps, and on the outside, Gwen is like, no, come on, no, we have to keep it open for a little longer, and Anya says, no, we have to seal this now, we have to do it now, and it just all comes to a head until finally, we then cut to, we then cut to... The, the web warriors as they sit outside the, the Faraday cage now completely sealed up. Sadly for them, Billy and Mayday did not manage to make it out of the cage in time. And while Gwen does chew Anya out for this, saying that she essentially killed Billy and Mayday, 
Well, Anya says that she had to make a call, and ultimately, if they are dead, then they didn't die in vain. The Electros have been stopped, now complete, now captured and trapped on Earth 803 in the Faraday cage, and once more, the multiverse is saved. But that, all hope is not lost in, on Billy and Mayday's front. Excuse me a sec. Sorry about that dog stuff. But anyway, yeah, all hope is not lost in the, on the Billy and Mayday front, as once the Spideys manage to make it back to Loom World, Karn is able to actually discern something. Basically, before the Faraday cage was sealed up, there was a resurgence of energy that did re that did resonate with Billy's and that essentially resonated with as bit like Billy's teleporter, meaning that there is a chance that Billy and Mayday are still out there alive and somewhere in the multiverse. While he while Karn was not able to pinpoint where, as the as the web was heavily damaged recently because of the of all the electros, at the very least, it does give them hope that they are still out there, and the Spideys begin immediately making preparations to try and locate them. Although, Ben does admit that he has to go back to his world, since if Mayday's not there, someone needs to be around to protect to protect, to protect the family. However, Octa however, the Spideys do believe they are in good hands, as they all immediately begin think out trying to think of ways to take to find Billy, with even Octavia offering to stick around and offer her own technical expertise, and thus the comic ends that with Karn speechifying about how, yes, they saved the multiverse today, but there is always tomorrow, as we see this admittedly pretty cool shot as we see him as we see him framed against the Web of Life and Destiny, seeing all the different Spideys across it, and the Web Warriors looking up at him triumphant, so there you go. Okay, so, since that's the final issue, well, our final part of the storyline, what are my thoughts on, well, the comic as well as Electroverse as a whole? Well, first, well, in the first, in the case of the comic, it's very much feel it very much feels like an epic climax. Of course, when you have, but yeah, much like with Spider Verse and how awesome it was to see all these different Spideys in the same room together fighting side by side and kicking ass, there is a similar bit of awesomeness to seeing a whole army of Electros all in one place just getting ready to go just re getting ready to wreck everyone's shit admittedly it does feel like a pants to be darkened moment because well because while the spideys are superheroes at the end of the day and want to help people the electros are not they are super villains in the and they are so they're they are super villains just plain gold super villains they don't give a damn about anybody and the only reason they're all banding together is because they want to take over the multiverse so it's very clear that the ele so it's very so while it is pretty awesome and cr and cool to see all these different electros in one place, it also it can be pretty terrifying, especially when they're all getting ready to battle because it's clear to them because it's very clear they do not give a shit about anybody and they are very much ready to fry your ass if you if you so much as look at them funny and considering that they're all variants of Max Dillon who is all, who is very much power hungry in his own sense no pun intended it very it's very much a it's just a matter of. <laughs> Of you get of, it, it helps emphasize just how big of a problem this is because well it's Electro Electro himself like I said in the, when I talked about the previous issue Electro as a villain is already powerful he controls electricity and that is not something you and that's not someone you really want to mess with now get an army of different versions of this guy running around all of them just as trigger happy just as power hungry and all just as nuts of course it's gonna be. So it's something dangerous, something you gotta do, so it's something dangerous, and something you r has to be, that you know, has to be dealt with quickly, because if not, it's just gonna get worse and worse, and likewise, I like how they showcase that in Spider-Verse, because it's clear that at this point, the Electros don't have complete control over the multiverse, like the Spideys when they first started, they're just jumping around the multiverse doing random shit, they of course plan things out somewhat, because they do have all the Doc Ox working together, mapping out the multiverse and letting them know, okay, this world's safe, this world's safe, this one this is the best strategy for this world, and so on and so forth, but in the case of the Electros themselves, but when it comes down to the grand design, so to speak, they have to start small, doing small things to work towards bigger things, which makes sense. But which also kind of explains why they were why they were stealing silver like they were. Hold on again, sorry, again, sorry, dog stuff. But yeah, like I said, it helps further explain why they were stealing silver like they were, since the heart of the Electroverse was the battery, so to speak. 
Yeah, I get it. The battery was char was powering the electroverse. Hey, <laughs> basically, it makes sense why they would want to essentially keep charging him up. He was the one in charge of everything, and because he was a hive mind of electros, it makes sense. It makes sense to have to recruit more electros, not just to build up their ranks, but also to add more power to this guy. Because the more electros get added in, the stronger he gets, the smarter he gets, the more he's able to expand his reach. And basically, with the taking of Loom World, that means they would have complete access to the multiverse, although, like with the Inheritors, if they want to use the Web of Life and Destiny for anything, they're gonna need the Master Weaver, so... I do at the very least, so I do kind of like how they build it up, and I do like how the tension kind of keeps raising in that regard, because while, at this point, the Electros are a threat, but they're not like a big threat, so to speak. They're not like we're, they're not like we're on the verge of destruction kind of threat. Like, case in point, let's, talk, let's compare the Electroverse to the Inheritors. The inheritors may not have had may not have been like we're con the inheritors were very much a big threat because they by themselves were powerful enough to take on the spider army just uh, by themselves because they were just that powerful. A uh, one of them could take on a handful of spideys and likewise and likewise, because they had access to Web of Life and Destiny, it allowed them complete and con utter control over the multiverse. And, well, okay, not really complete and utter control, but they could travel around it as they please. And it is clear that they did use it to conquer entire universes based on the setup of Loom World. And the fact that one of the universes we saw during the Spider-Verse storyline, or at least in one of the tie-ins, was a world that one of the Inheritors had managed to conquer and pretty much, and pretty much tw twisted and shaped into his own little ha into his own little haven. But then, likewise, we have the Electros who are making a grab at power, and while they clearly have an idea of what they want, it's they have not gotten it yet, but they know how to get it, and that and it makes them a problem. They're not like on the level of the Inheritors yet, because the Inheritors have, did have access, did have complete control over the, over the Web of Life and Destiny, and thus did take it, took advantage of it, but the Electros are slowly but surely base building up their power, so to speak. Starting small with crimes, but being, or, but also trying to be organized, gathering whatever they can in order to build that power, traveling to world, traveling to whatever worlds they can to gather resources, being smart if those worlds have some the kind of interference, like when they hired Black Cat to distract Lady Spider, so they could steal the silver from her world. But then, likewise, when things start, when they start upping the ante, they start going for bigger game. Like when they, like when they, like when the Electroverse sent a handful of Electros to invade Loom World and get the Web of Life and Destiny. That was again smart. But likewise, like the Inheritors, if the Electroverse wanted to do anything with the web they would need the master weaver since that's since he's the guy that weaves the web keeps it going is able to open the portals and know how it works he's in because of the master weaver's whole role with the web he's intrinsically linked to it in order and so if you want to use the web for anything you need him it's part of the reason why it's part of the reason why when the inheritors went after the original master weaver they had to chain him up using specially made chains because if they wanted access to the web they kind of needed him to use it so Again, it kind of makes... So I do kind of like that. It shows that they are building up power, but they're not on the threat of the Inheritors yet. Still a major threat, but not there yet. And so it gives the Spideys more of a fighting chance in that regard. But in that same to but by that same token... It's also what makes the story good, in my opinion. While there are some bits and story bit, While there are some story bits here and there that feel like they're skipped over, especially in between issues, on a whole, it does feel like a great... I think what makes the story work is that it feels like a regular Spider-Man story, but on a grander scale, which I think makes sense considering that this is a solo book featuring a, a handful of Spideys from across the multiverse versus an army of Electros. Again, I well, like I said, it is really damn cool and terrifying to see this entire army of alternate versions of one of Spider-Man's villains coming together and trying to bet and trying to pool their resources to take over the multiverse. But at the same time, this is not some big, grand, posh villain who is specifically targeting Spider-Man. These are alt this is alternate versions of a guy that Spider-Man regularly will punch in the face because he's doing something wrong. And so as a result, it's essentially just like a grander scale version of Spider-Man versus Electro. And you see that can showcase throughout the story. The Electros themselves may have may have oh, they may have more grandiose designs for conquering the multiverse, 
but they're still electros. They're power hungry. They can be kind of stupid. They don't see beyond what's in front of them. Even the battery is kind of is guilty of this, despite the fact that he's supposed to be a hive mind of electros and is supposed to be like, have the collective minds of hundreds of thousands of other electros and all that bull crap. And yet he still gets caught off guard plenty of times. It's actually really funny. I love how he talks a big game and says how he's this big bad electro that you can't stop him to just run away now because fighting is futile. And then every time the Spidey's managed to out actually actually managed to outthink this guy, he's like, oh shit, didn't see that coming. I find that hilarious. I think that actually works well, and I further showcases that despite how big and grand this is, this is still just Spider-Man versus Electro, but with but with the multiverse thrown in. You got a team of different Spideys from across the multiverse trying to save what's left, trying to save them, trying to save all these worlds, and then you have the Electros trying to conquer it. Again, it's grander scale, but the players are people that you know. Different, okay, different versions of them, yes, but it's still the same formula. Again, it's great. Again, because of the grander scale, the Spideys do need to up their game when facing the Electros. Because, yeah, in most of the encounters the Spideys have with the Electros, they are they the Electros manage to almost beat them every time. But it's about that same token. When the, when the Spideys realize the Electros are beating them, they start trying to think of different ways to take them down. We saw that in the last issue when the Web Warriors and the spot with the Web Warriors and Spider Gwen. The Web Warriors tried following any leads they could in order to try and get an edge on the Electros. And then likewise, when they did find a lead, it's what helped them in, in issue five. As the lead they found was that the Electros gave Black Hat a little necklace bobble that had a tiny Electro inside it. And so they began studying that bobble and realized, oh, this has properties of a Faraday cage. Maybe we can take these properties and apply it to our webbing. We can make a much larger one to trap the Electros. Now it's again, it's smart. It's thinking outside the box. And likewise, we see on the other side, we got Gwen who realizes we can't fight these guys. We can't fight these guys directly. I especially, we especially can't fight their leader. So it's at the very least, maybe we could take away a resource of theirs so that this whole conquer the multiverse thing is harder to do, which is what leads to her and Ben ends up freeing all the Doc Ox and even meeting Octavia Otto. I like seeing that. It's smart thinking. Finding, th thinking of different ways and and trying to outthink and outmaneuver the enemy. Not be not fight, not taking them down by being seeing who's the heart who can hit someone harder, but by actually using their brains and thinking of different strategies to at least make things a little bit harder for them to do their jobs which is why we which is why they which is why Gwen and Ben free the Doc Ox and likewise when they do manage to take the Electros down it's via a way that the Electros can't counter a giant web insulated Faraday cage that's Actually, pretty awesome. I like that. It's smart thinking. And again, and what I do like too is that the ending really does kind of bring the tension, especially when you have Mayday and Bi and Billy trapped within there, but still giving a little bit of hope that they may be out there, which further adds the, which further lays down the groundwork for more for future storylines. I like that because it still makes you because because since these two are now lost out there in the multiverse, it could compel you to want to read more of the Web Warriors because you want to see maybe just maybe they'll find them again, which I think is cool. And it's another strength that I like about the Web. Warriors books because while it is essentially like Spider-Verse on a smaller scale, it's still a team book and the multiverse is infinite. There's a lot of alternate worlds in the multiverse, and we and as we saw in Spider-Verse, there are a lot of alternate Spideys. And one of the things that I talked about that I thought worked with Web Warriors was how the story allowed us to revisit a good chunk of these Spideys, especially ones who were introduced exclusively for Spider-Verse, like with Lady Spider or Spider-Ben. These were Spideys that were originally introduced in Spider-Verse, and, and despite the fact that they were part of the army, they were ultimately just side characters in those stories. And as a result, it didn't really feel like we were ever going to see them again. Like, they were just here so that they could be a part of Spider-Verse and then be gone. But now we have another little chance to see them again. See them in action, doing their own thing, adapting adapting to their new to their new status quos or seeing them in their regular status quos. We see, like like I said, in issue one, we got a story with Lady Spider just tracking down her world's version of the Black Cat, which, yeah, was still another part of the grander story with Electroverse, but it was also just, a, but at the same time, it was just a nice little story that was essentially just a, this world's version of a classic Spider-Man bat, a classic Spider-Man chase between, between that world's Spidey and that world's Black Cat. I liked seeing that. It was just... Fun and it allowed us to see more of how her world operated and how she operated in that world. It was great. It was great, and I liked that. And then I like when we get to see more of Spider Ben in the story. When I saw him, I was just grinning ear to ear, seeing this guy who popped in for the climax of Spider Verse get his luster back, and then decided to settle down on on Mayday's world. Now he's brought back in, and essentially it showcases he can still kick ass. So we get to see more of him as Spider Man. I love that. I like seeing that. It's just cool. And I, like I said, I like his. Sp 
Spider-Man outfit. It's really it's cool. It's nice. So seeing him back in action, kicking ass again. I like that. It gives us more opportunities to see more of that, to see more characters like that. And because again, it's because that this is a team book, we can alternate which who's on the team and who isn't. And we kind of get that from here. And we kind of have that at the end of the story when Billy and Mayday are gone. Because now we technically have two open slots here. And so, and we've already seen that they can still recruit Spideys with with Lady Spider and Ben. And ben so, what? who's to say they couldn't just bring in a few more Spideys to essentially fill in the role? They did it in Exile, so why couldn't they do it with the Web Warriors? So I, so I like seeing that. And again, there is still plenty, and there's still a lot of cool stuff to like. The action is still so damn good. I like how, th I like how it operates and seeing the different Spideys go up against the electros i like seeing how things develop and the more you learn about ever and the more you learn about the electros and what they're and what they're doing in the multiverse i like seeing the spideys try and outthink them i like seeing how they are trying to adapt and see more of that and how and see how grand the stakes get when you learn just how prepared the electros are in how and when in their attempts to conquer the multiverse i do like seeing more of that and I love the humor. It's like you can't have a Spider-Man book without humor, and this book does have and does still have enough of it. Again, it's not too much humor as they try to still keep everything mostly serious for the mo mostly serious, especially with everything. But at the same time, this is a team of spider people. They're gonna make jokes, and they do have plenty of good ones. There's like the running gag with Moon Electro constantly getting punched in the face by Spideys is genuinely funny. I love seeing the team interacting with Spider Ham. I love kind of the joke when Mayday originally went back to Loom World. She said, "Emergency, emergency! Web Warriors assemble!" And the only people there were Karn, Pavitter, and Spider Ham. That was that was actually kind of funny. I liked seeing the. I liked. Hold on one second. Sorry again, dog stuff. But yeah, like I said, it has a great sense of humor to it. There might be more dog stuff. But yeah, the storyline does have a great sense of humor to it. But on the whole, I think what makes it work is, again, it just feels fun. It just feels like, well, I guess the comic equivalent of a popcorn flick. There's something... Like yeah, things are mostly grand and mostly grand, but it, it's, it, it, the, the story never forgets for one moment that it's a story of a multiversal team of Spideys versus a multiversal army of Electros, and so it and so while it keeps the stakes high enough, it also likes to keep things fun and action packed. It's got plenty of humor and jokes, but also has creative setups and scenarios that ultimately still make it entertaining, and it never forgets that fact from beginning to end. I'm not gonna claim the storyline is perfect by any means. It does have a few flaws here and there. Sorry, Chindi is sniffing the, the tablet. Like, for example, it like there are some times when the story can jump around a little t more than it should. Like, it doesn't jump around, like, too much. Like, things are mostly kept at a relatively good pace, but between issues, it feels like the things happen that we should see, but we don't. Like, case in point, between issues two and three, where the Spideys go back to Loom World, and then, like, yeah. Like, between issues two and three, when the Spideys leave the Egyptian world, go back to the Loom World, but then go right back to the Egyptian world, except this time they left Anya behind. If it wasn't, if you weren't paying attention, it would look as though that they apparently left Anya behind at Loom World when they went to go face them, and then likewise never left. Even, like, it's really, if you were, it, it's a problem. I'll give it that. That's a little, mi that's a minor problem. And likewise, while the story never forgets what it is, it also makes it a little hard to take some big threats in the story seriously. While the battery is supposed to be this big, intimidating fucker who's supposed to be a conglomeration of all these different electros from across the multiverse, at the same time, he doesn't feel any better than them either. You get, you definitely can buy that he's more powerful than them, but at his core, he's still an electro. And likewise, he's prone to making the same mistakes. And the thing is... It feels like he doesn't do anything. I'm not kidding. When we see him in the story, he doesn't really do. He doesn't really get off his ass and, and do anything until Gwen and Ben end up bringing him to Earth 803. Which, oh yeah, that's another problem that could have been showcased in the story. We could have seen Octavia repairing the Spidey's device web watches. Now you can make the argument that maybe that it got repaired when Billy made it, came in went in contact with Gwen. But the thing is, the watch got fried by the Electros when she and Mayday were ambushed on the Egyptian world. So. Why, so, why couldn't we see it get fixed in the actual comic? Again, I guess the implication is that Octavia fixed it, but it would have been nice to actually see her and say, oh, it's a good thing you fixed my watch or something like that. I don't know. My point is this. There are some points in the story where, where for the most part, it feels like they should have shown something that didn't. And then likewise, despite how big and grand the Electroverse is, it also feels like they're just super, 
It doesn't really feel like it's as big as it should be with them. Like, there is a legitimate threat with having the Electros take over the multiverse, but then in fair fights, they don't feel like they're any better than your standard Electro. Even the one who's supposed to be their big boss tends to make mistakes and, and go, oh shit, despite the fact that he's supposed to be one of the smartest guys in the room. So why the hell do they keep... So why the hell doesn't he think about these things? Shouldn't he realize, oh, they can teleport me away, or, oh, she can break the windows, or something like that. I feel like that you should maybe, just maybe, have them have, carry a little bit more weight to them. Now, I understand you can't make them OP. You don't want to make it seem like the Spideys are completely 100% screwed there. But at the same time, maybe just raise the stakes a little bit more to showcase just how overconfident the Electros are in their plans, just what I'm saying. And so, as a result, it does feel a little somewhat lesser than what it could be. But with that being said, what we do still have is still fun it's great it's got like i said it's got the, st the comic has the storyline has great action spread throughout when you see the spideys and the electros duke it out as well as the spideys just as well as just seeing the spideys do their own thing it's still cool to, to, to peek back in with all these different spider people that we met during spider-verse including ones who aren't part of the team who can kind of be that can become a part of it briefly briefly and because of the team book you can swap you can have a rolling cast of characters every now and then like 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 such as when we showcased Billy and Mayday disappearing and thus Lady and seeing Lady Spider Ben and even Octavia come in and join the team, so to speak. And then likewise and likewise, it's still got plenty of good humor. The storyline, despite some little hiccups here and there, does move at a great pace and does show the sp showcase the Spideys being smart and, st and staying on their toes. As they try and find ways to, t to take down the electro to take down the Electroverse and out think while also trying to get yeah, while also trying it's cool seeing them think on the think on their feet and try and find ways to to take down the electroverse without actually facing them in combat. Yes, that's what I meant to say. And on the whole, it does leave enough open for future storylines to make you want to come back and see more. And so want to see more while still keeping everything going and keep, while still keeping everything going and making you have some relief that there is still hope and that the good guys did win in the end. So on the whole, I think as an opening story for Web Warriors, Electroverse was a lot of fun. It's not perfect, it's not ama it's not amazing, but it certainly is a great popcorn storyline and story that it basically that does showcase what you can expect from the Web Warriors books and I think on the whole was just a great time on was just a great time. So, yeah, that's really about it. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this and next time and when we meet again on Saturday, well, we're gonna kind of be reaching the we're gonna kind of be reaching the final stretch of the Spider Verse era of these vlogs. Now, like I said, we're not gonna be stopping with the vlogs after the next one, but the next trade that we're gonna be looking at is also sadly the final trade in the Spider Verse era, so to speak. As well, the next trade contains the final six issues of Web Warriors. Is it any good? Does the book go out in a bang instead of a whimper? Well, you have to tune in on Saturday to find out. So. I hope that you go, I hope that you come in, I hope that you come by. If you don't, sorry, I didn't, sorry, I wasn't able to keep you. But for those of you who wish to come back on Saturday, I hope you have a, I hope you had a good time with this video. I hope that you have a good evening, and as always, take care.